Hi, I'm Peggy Farron and we are live with the Understand Photography Show where we talk about travel and nature photography. Welcome to episode 25. So a couple things that I want to talk about ahead of time. First of all, the Florida Camera Club Council, which is the statewide um, umbrella group of all the Florida camera clubs, is hosting a convention March 10th through the 12th right here in Southwest Florida. It's going to be at Florida Gulf Coast University again from March 10th through 12th. There's a trade show. The trade show is free. Um, there's some pre-conference workshops which are an additional cost but you don't have to go to the full conference if you want to take the pre-conference workshops. Uh, the speakers are Rick Salmon and um, Mike Corrado, Dan Cox, Peggy Farron. In fact, I'm doing a workshop, which if you're watching this show, we're going to talk about flash photography today. I'm doing a workshop on Friday morning, that's March 10th, through the Florida Camera Club Council at the convention, March 10th, Friday from 9 to 12, and it's called Flash for Portrait Photography. So it's going to be a flash class, on and off camera flash class, and then we're going to end up with about an hour and a half model shoot. I've got several models coming in and we're going to have different stations for on-camera flash, off-camera flash, so you'll get to practice with help what you've learned that day. And of course you're going to learn more today on our flash, our, our Understand Photography show about flash. Um, also the four weeks to proficiency in photography is our online class, but remember it's live, so you can either watch it live, watch the recording, but Either way, you have to turn your homework into me, and that is probably one of the best components of that class. You need a strong foundation in photography. I just had uh, somebody who took my last, most recent class. She said she's been taking classes for seven years, and once she took the four weeks to proficiency in photography, she finally got it. So start, start there. You need the good foundation, okay? My guest today, all right, one thing, having a live show is uh, challenging. <laughs> so our guest was supposed to be Logan Newell and something came up, he couldn't make it. So the lovely Joe Fitzpatrick is filling in, but it's okay because Joe and I, we work together. Joe, Joe and I both work here at Understand Photography. Joe's like a walking encyclopedia. So we're gonna talk about flash photography today and we're going to get into some good stuff. If you're wondering about Flash, Joe knows everything. Hi, Joe. Hi, Peggy. Thank you for filling in last minute. Oh, great to be here. Boy, that was a surprise when you called me last night. I last night. <coughs> Joe! <laughs> <laughs> Panic set in. Okay, but I'm going to do a, another short commercial because Joe is, he leads many of our photo tours and trips and workshops here at Understand Photography. He's got one coming up to St. Augustine, Florida, May 4th through the 7th. Now that, do you want to talk about that a little bit? or? Well, do it's, it's a good trip. Actually, that was the uh, very first workshop we started to do way back when. Uh, we call it Birds and Buildings because what we do is in the morning we shoot the uh, birds uh, and there's fantastic rookery up there, probably one of the best on the East Coast. So we shoot birds under the best light in the morning, then we take a break at lunchtime, and then in the afternoon we shoot historic old St. Augustine, which is fascinating for uh, oldest city in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic architecture. Uh, if you like shooting doors and windows and cobbled streets and all this kind of stuff, it's great for that. They have a great fort there, a couple wonderful churches, so we shoot all that in the afternoon. So we, we get a nice mix. And now our trips too, our workshops, I only take five photographers. Okay. That's the limit, five period. That way everybody gets personal attention. Uh, with five people, we've learned, we've tried more, we've tried this and that, and five seems to be the sweet spot where everybody gets all the attention they need regardless of their uh, skill level. I can take people of really widely different skill levels and nobody holds anybody back because right. each person gets enough time that they, they bring their skills up. So you'll come back, wonderful images, and you've learned a little bit. That's cool. And uh, just a little history, um, when I met Joe, he and his, his buddy at the time, uh, they said, oh, you need to start doing trips. And I'm like, okay, you guys organize it and I'll try to sell it. And that was our first trip to St. Augustine. Yeah. And I went on yeah. it and it yeah. was really fun. I didn't think I was going to be interested in photographing the birds, but 
it was so fascinating because at that rookery, they are so close. And of course, you chose the time of year to go yeah. when the babies are there. Absolutely, it's so, the best time of year. So there's like, what? Like thousands, right? Yeah. Thousands of birds. With Literally, lots yeah. of them. Most mm -hmm. of most of them have babies. Yeah. In the nests, mm -hmm. and they're ten feet away. Yeah, you have nest building. You have them feeding chicks. You have sun starting to fledge. It's 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 amazing. It uh, is amazing. And as you said, uh, this is a place that you can get by with a two hundred millimeter, three hundred millimeter lens because literally, there's a lot of places where you can reach out, and if you want it, you could take the eggs out of the nest. They're that close. It's amazing. Yeah. And then, of course, the sunrise shoot you do. Well, yeah, I was going to say. I got say, up for that. Yeah, that, that's probably <laughs> one of the rarest pictures in my collection is a Peggy Farron at dawn outside yeah. functioning. <laughs> functioning, that was the key Function, word. That was the key word, <laughs> functioning. But it was really fun. Yeah. Really oh, well, we fun. We used that, actually, the... Uh, on Facebook, the Understand Photography group page. Isn't that what we use the uh, shot from that still? We still have I, that on I there? I don't remember to tell yeah, you the, the fort, truth. Uh, what a, one of our pages, we have the... Uh, the fort. The sunrise the of the sunrise fort is the lead into it, yeah. And by the way, Joe is talking about our Facebook group, which is our support group. So if you have any questions about cameras or anything about photography, you just want to show off some of your pictures, it's facebook.com slash groups slash understand photography. It's an interactive group. So we, Joe and I both monitor it and other people help us too. If you say, hey, I'm thinking about buying this flash or that flash or what kind of lens should I get or what do you think of this picture, that's the place to put your stuff. Yeah, it's so a great place to get information and since we're watching it, uh, you're not going to get bad information on there. So much of the internet, the information you get is bad to, bad to worse, but at least this way you have professional ph photographers, us and some others, monitoring it so the advice you get is expert. Yes, good. All right, so let's get into flash photography. You ready? Yes. All right, so... Ask now, me something. <laughs> all right, now you started photography a long time ago. I started a long time ago. I didn't start back with Matthew Brady when what they were doing flash back then is they'd take a, a big piece of wood and they'd put magnesium powder on it and light it on fire and hopefully not set their hair on fire <laughs> while they were doing it or the tent or whatever. But we've advanced since then. We went through flash bulbs and then we got into the electronic flashes we use today, which are fantastic. Uh, what we're using today, they're little computers. They talk back and forth with the camera and they come up. It's fantastic how well they do the exposure. Okay. Uh, what we're using today in these various forms is TTL, which means through the lens metering. Okay. And that's what's happening with it. Uh, Nikon uses ITTL as their current one, and Canon is ETTL2 as their current one. And I know the ETTL stands for evaluative, but I don't know what the I stands for on the Nikons. Intelligent, I believe. Ah. Okay. But TTL always yeah. means through, through the, the lens. lens. <laughs> through, the, through the lens, and it has for years. Uh, and that's the kind of metering your camera does anyway, through the lens, uh, with an interchangeable lens or a mirrorless. They're through the lens metering. Right. But the flash is also metering, and that's a separate function. Uh, okay. It's fascinating the way the TTL works. And I'll talk more about the Canon system. That's a little more advanced in the metering department, but they both are similar, that and the Nikon. What happens when you use your flash, whether it's an on cam, on, if, it's on, if it's TTL, so it's on camera, or off, it could be off camera too in TTL. Mm -hmm. When it's in TTL mode, what happens? Uh, when you press the shutter button. Of your camera. Of your camera. The, fla the camera meters the scene without the flash and looks at the brightness. Uh -huh. And then it fires a pre-flash, okay. and then it looks at the reflectivity coming back from that and looks at the brightness of that. And it compares the brightness of every single metering point in the camera and looks at the difference between them. The areas that are extra bright coming back, it assumes that's your main subject. And that's and it, because usually they're closer. They're closer, so you're getting more light back from them. So it doesn't matter whether they're in the middle of the frame or off to the side or high or low. It sees that, knows that's the central, assumes that's the central subject, adjusts the flash output to get a proper exposure on that, and then the main flash fires. Now all this happens, all you see is one flash because mm -hmm. this happens in milliseconds, it's so fast. 
I mean, it takes me 10 minutes to explain it, and it <laughs> happens in the blink of an eye. It's amazing that all this stuff happens just in sequence with each other. All right, so let's say that again, but let's, let's put less detail in it to make it simpler. Okay. Okay. So you press, you get your, let's say you have your flash on top of your camera, mm -hmm. and it's in TTL. Right. Which is the default for default, most TTL yeah. fla mm -hmm. flashes. Exactly. And so you press the shutter, and doesn't matter what your camera is. If your camera's an aperture priority program at manual. No, it's doing the same thing. Doesn't in the each. same. Okay, no. so you press the shutter. It meters. First it meters the camera. Mm -hmm. Then it meters the pre-flash. Mm -hmm. Then it de de decides mm -hmm. between your camera settings and your mm -hmm. it calculates it calculates the proper exposure for the flash. And it's also looking at your camera settings. It's also looking at the camera settings when it does it. Yeah, okay. the camera is doing all this. The flash is not. This okay. is this is being done by the brain in the camera. Oh, okay. The processor in the camera is doing all this. All it's doing, it tells the flash to fire the pre-flash, and it tells the flash what output to have when it fires the main flash. Oh. The camera does the thinking. Okay. All right. So do all cameras? read TTL flashes? Do you, do you have to buy, like, if I have a Canon, do I have to buy a Canon flash? Yeah, they're, they're proprietary systems. The way they talk back and forth to each other is unique to each brand. Okay. So if you're dealing with a, a Canon camera body, you would need a flash from Canon or a third party. There are third parties that make them designed for the ETTL2 system, just like you would need the flash for Nikon ITTL system or Olympus or Panasonic or, or Sony or whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, is there any time that I can use a Nikon flash on a Canon camera? You can use it in manual mode. Okay. But I would avoid it because uh, when you're in manual, if you're just firing, just boom, no control, it's only using. Uh, it's an off-on switch. Uh -huh. But you have all these other little pins sticking out. Uh -huh. And they may be sending the wrong voltage or information to the brain in the uh -huh. camera. So I would be hesitant to put something right. with extra pins. Okay. Okay. So that I would So be, you say no, don't I do it. I would say no Just because don't do it. Yeah, don't it's too go expensive there. because you could you know you, you can do, wreck your camera. Yeah, you know. I don't know whether that's possible, but it's it's certainly theoretically possible. Whether anybody's done that or not, I don't know, but my camera body's too expensive, my flash too expensive <laughs> to gamble on it, you know, so I'm not going to do it. All right, so um, now the Canon has, you said, was more sophisticated than the well, Nikon. It, Why it, is that? Well, the, the Nikon, to the best of my knowledge, uh, their pre flash, they don't have this evaluative uh, metering where it looks at the brightest thing. When there's fires, it looks at an average and takes that. Now you can do that with the Canon too. There's two different modes on there. And how do you? How would you change? What's the default? The default is the evaluative okay. metering mode, which stands the E in the yeah, ETTL. Yeah. So how how would you the change average, it to you average? You do that in the camera body and the in flash the controls. Yeah, oh. you go into the menu under wherever your flash controls mm -hmm. are, and it would be in there. Is there a reason you would want to do that? Uh, it, if if you typically are having problems because what it thinks is the main subject is not. Oh. It could be throwing you off. Okay. okay, if you have something with a real high reflectivity that gets real bright, that's closer than your subject, it could be giving you a false reading. Okay. Uh, it's pretty sophisticated on that too. When it looks at the points, if there's something that comes back super bright, it assumes that was like a, uh, a specular highlight off of uh, a mirror or something like that and takes that into account and ignores that particular brightness. Okay. Pretty sophisticated. So, all right, well, actually that, that brings me up to a good question okay. because when you shoot in t t t with your flash in TTL, that's mm -hmm. like shooting in your flash in automatic. Exactly, yeah. Okay. The flash is doing the thinking or the camera or whatever. Mm -hmm. Somebody's doing yeah. the thinking, you don't have to. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, when do you have the problems? Because you just said one of the major problems that I've had with TTL flash, and that's shooting into a mirror. Yeah. Well, or not into a mirror, but if there's a mirror yeah. behind the subject, and it, so 
if there's something unusually bright reflecting back, it can confuse it. Or if you're shooting into the sun or something, you know, can hurt it a little bit too. Because I've had mostly problems with TTL flash either when there's mirrors or mm -hmm. glass behind my subjects. Yeah, because yeah. you're getting the reflection. It's trying not to do that, but it can only do so much. So what's happening, you think, is it's seeing the flash, in the, the pre-flash in the mirror. Yeah. And that's why it's always dark. Right, exactly. It's, it's darkening down. Mm -hmm. Now, the evaluative is set up to try and ignore that if it's a small bright source, but if the, the whole mirror you get in yeah, it back, you it's, the it's, mirror, then, then it's, it's, cause it's you've always really it. dark whenever there's yeah. a mirror glass behind my subject. So, and that's because it's, it's not, it's putting the importance on what you're focusing on, right? Mm -hmm. But it's metering yes. the whole scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, so what's the remedy? Okay. So I'm cruising along. I'm getting, I'm, let's say I'm at a re wedding reception. I'm a wedding photographer. I'm taking all these pictures with flash. It's all coming out great. And then I start taking pictures and it's not coming out great in TTL. What do I do? Well, you have, you, you can, you, you have exposure compensation on the flash, just like you do on the camera in your automatic modes. Okay. So you can dial in exposure compensation to make it, make the flash darker or brighter. Okay. Separate from the camera. So, like for instance, I'm just going to tell it for instance, mm -hmm. because in a, on a Canon you hit the little select button, you turn the dial, and it right. says plus mm -hmm. one, plus two, so exactly. it's going to go up a stop or mm -hmm. up two stops. Or yeah. So it's still giving you like, it says, okay, you need this much light, however much light that mm -hmm. is, but you're saying, okay, this much light plus one stop. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And you can do that either from the uh, back of the flash on the better flashes, or from the camera menu system as well. But that takes too long. Oh yeah, it's, it's much. If you're it, in a hurry, you want to learn to do it on the back yeah, of the flash. Yeah, it's much more convenient for me to do it on the back of the camera, but uh, be aware that you can do it from the menu system. Okay. You know, you can do pretty much anything in the menu system you can on the back, but uh, for the flashes I use and you use, it's a lot easier to hit the button on the back and spin a wheel. Yeah, you know, and I, I change my flash settings a lot mm -hmm. on the fly while yeah. I'm working because you can, what's so beautiful about digital photography, you can look at the back of the camera and say, oh, I'm not getting enough flash. Exactly. And it's just like, hit that select mm -hmm. button, turn the just wheel, boom, you, you've mm -hmm. got it up a stop. Yeah. Okay, so what if that, what if I'm shooting into the mirrors though and that's not helping me? Then what do I do? Go manual. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. what I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, if, if, the, uh, if the automatic setting isn't working for you, you go manual. Okay. And manual flash is, is easy to use. Uh, you know, once you grasp the idea of what's going on there, uh, when you put it on manual, you have full control. You adjust the output from full flash to down to uh, 164th power, or maybe 128th power, something like that, in, in third of a stop or half stop increments. So you can really fine tune the flash output. It may take you a shot or two to get dialed in what you want, unless you're very familiar with your flash. But once you've dialed it in, you got it, you're locked in. What you do have to watch though, is when you're on manual, taking a step forward or back is a big change in the amount of light that you're putting out. You're gonna be turning, so if you step back, you're turning your flash down. Quite a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really, you're really dropping it off considerably. And that's another way to fine tune the adjustment on the brightness, just get a little closer and change your zoom a little bit. But I have a story. I, uh, one of my good customers who I adore, but anyway, she had an event planner for her 25th anniversary and she didn't, the event planner just didn't tell me everything that was going on. I don't know if it was my fault. I didn't ask or whatever, but I didn't know what was happening. So at the, it was pitch dark and at the end, like after dinner, she said, okay, everybody, it was like a hundred people there. Everybody come out to the dock. And so I was like, what the heck's going on? Why are we going out? It's dark, you know, and they live on a lake. They don't mm -hmm. live on the, anyway. So we get out there and her son was, had a, a piano, or not piano, but one of those little keyboard player and, and her son was singing. Oh, well, that's nice, right? So I take a picture and my flash is in TTL and it overexposed him he, because I guess it was metering the whole scene and it was mm -hmm. pitch dark. Mm -hmm. So he was like this perfect white ghost. Oh, wow. So I took a couple flat, more pictures, realized my TTL was not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I put my flash in manual 
And this is when I first started shooting with my flash and manual because I, I go both ways. I go TTL and manual now yeah. and I do both a lot. Mm -hmm. And now I do, I am pretty good at going, oh, I need my flash at one eighth power <laughs> from this distance or yeah. whatever. But um, anyway, I took like three shots. He was a ghost. So I put it in manual, the flash in manual. And I had no idea what to put it in because I wasn't used to shooting in manual at that time. And it was my flash was on camera. So I put it on like 164th power and it wasn't nearly enough power so I put it on full power which is one over one right mm -hmm. and then it turned into a ghost he turned into a ghost oh, again wow. then I turned it into one quarter power and it still was too much and then I turned it and I'm taking all these pictures and I thought oh my gosh all these guests probably think what an idiot why are you take <laughs> but the problem is is because I didn't know if he was going to sing one song or 20 yeah, songs yeah. so I had to do it all like really really fast yeah, under yeah. pressure and that's so one thing that I've learned is once you, when you learn something under stress, you really learn it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, from that point on, I was like, I am really going to learn <laughs> to master my flash yeah. in the manual mode. So let's talk about the flash in the manual mode for a little bit. Okay. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so we can just, it turns up and down like a dimmer switch, right? Exactly, yeah. You're, you're varying the flash output uh, over a wide range, like I said, from full power to maybe 164th power or 1128th power or something like that. So you have this wide range and you have third of a stop increment, so you can pretty much fine tune it to very precise amount of light coming out. And that light is constant. As long as you wait it long enough for the flash to recharge between shots. Oh, that's a good okay? point. Because that's wanna, a very good yeah, point. And you got to watch these flashes. The red light usually comes on at about 90% of full charge. Okay. So if you go off as soon as you see the ready light, you're probably not getting full power. You're probably about 90%. So you, you really need to give it a couple, another one count after you see the ready light to make sure you're fully charged. Okay, I want to go back to that, but I want to talk more about shooting in manual. So, mm -hmm. okay, so if I'm shooting, let's say that I want to shoot something that's five feet away and I determine that my with my camera settings, I already have my camera settings. How do I know what my camera settings should be, first of all? Well, it, your camera, you're going to have to make a decision there. Do you want the background black or do you want to see everything in the background? Uh, you know, like if you're shooting uh, on the beach uh, at sunset, you would meter on the background so you get the sunset properly exposed. And when you say meter on, you mean set your cameras settings. Set the camera settings to the I, background. To the background. You would adjust the camera for the background. Okay. So if you're on manual and that's the easiest way to do it on something like that, I would uh, aim my camera at a, a medium tone in the sky and I'd adjust my settings so I, I get a proper exposure. I may even take a picture just to make sure it's the way I want. I okay. would, you know, uh, and then I have that. And then my flash I would adjust separately. I would see whether I would take a shot with the flash. With experience, you'd know you'd be close if you started with maybe one thirty-second power. Mm -hmm. And you'd take the shot and see if you had a nice balance between the foreground light on your subject and the sun and the sunset scene in the background. And then if you didn't, you could just up or lower the flash output by however many thirds of a stop or stops you needed to get it right in. Then once you have it, as long as you're not moving your distance from you and the subject, you can shoot away. Okay. And you'll get very consistent light. Okay, so I set my camera to the background, mm -hmm. let's just say. Right. And then I have my person there that I'm mm -hmm. going to take a picture of, or right. dog, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I set my camera, no, my flash is in manual now. Mm -hmm. So my flash in manual, I deci decide on one eighth power. How did I decide on one eighth power? How do I know? Wild guess, experience. That's, you know I mean, what? That's exactly I mean, what I teach. You, you I know, just, wi just uh, wild guess at know, first. That's the thing that's ironic. Uh, th these flashes are very sophisticated, but they're really not set up to shoot on manual. Your old style flash, uh, what that used to do is it had two sliders on the back that showed you distance and which output you should have. Right. So you just had to look at the back of it and it would tell you what to put it on. So if you, it would say five feet, you should yeah. be at one yeah. eighth power yeah. or something it'd say like that. one eighth power or it'd say, and I'd look and say you need to be one eighth power if you're at F8 or F11 because the F-stop is changing mm -hmm. the, the output too. 
And in the olden days, though, back in the olden days, <laughs> we would use a light, a light meter as well and would, yeah. you know, yeah. pop the flash until mm -hmm. we got to F8 or whatever we needed. Now, it's so easy because you can take a wild guess. Say you put it on one eighth power, you take a wild guess, you take a picture, and you look at the back of the camera. Mm -hmm. And if it's too bright, then you go to one sixteenth power. Exactly. And if it's still too bright, you go to one thirty second power. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you said is that you can go one third increments, and that is true on some but not all flashes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have my old Canon 550EXs, they're just one stop okay. at a time. One full, inc one full stop at a time, so. Well, I was talking about flashes made in this century. <laughs> that's a 20th century flash, not a that 21st true. century flash. That is you're right. Flash. Yeah, oh so, my God, know, I didn't even so think that's, about that's that. So that's from last century, that's why that does that. I like those flashes, <laughs> though. I keep buying the used ones and getting them fixed, yeah. so. Okay, so, all right, so that's shooting in manual. And then, you, as you said, if you then you have to stay the same distance. The flash has to be the same yeah. distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're off camera flash, and you determine it, just leave that off camera flash on a light stand. You're good to go. Yeah. But if you're on camera flash shooting a manual, you have to pay attention to the distance. Exactly. Yeah. Or you have to be kind of turning up up mm -hmm. and down. Playing around with it. Yeah. Or another option, which I do sometimes, if I feel like I need to shoot in my flash in manual like for the night or whatever, sometimes I do. If I just yeah. decide you can make small little adjustments by just changing your aperture. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So if it's just a little bit too, or like I take a little step back, I might open my aperture a little to let a little more light in, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now you, when you were talking about, I want to go back to the thing you said about letting the flash recharge. Okay, now we'll come back to aperture too. i to talk about that a little more. Okay, all right. So when you were saying let it recharge, mm -hmm. that just brought me because I teach a flash class a mm -hmm. lot. So <laughs> I have I have a lot of experience on all the problems and things that people do that yeah. you just wouldn't guess that people mm -hmm. would do. So one of the main things, and I've seen several people do this, in my class description it says, make sure you bring fresh batteries or freshly charged batteries. <laughs> now, do you know what I'm talking about? I know about? where you're going with this, yeah, yeah. So I've had several people say, hey, my flash isn't going off. And I said, well, did you, are, do you have new batteries? Oh, yeah, the batteries are fine. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you changed them is yeah. the thing I learned to mm -hmm. ask. Mm -hmm. Because what they think is if that little, is it called LED or LCD? Yeah. LED. LED, you know, the little LED mm -hmm. screen on the back yeah. that tells you that you're in manual mode or oh, ETTL. LCD. I thought you meant oh, the LCD. Ready yeah, the LEDs are the ready lights. Okay, LCD. The LCD, you know, they can read it. So it has enough battery power to read that little tiny screen. That's not the same thing as having enough ba battery power to shoot off a mm -hmm. flash, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So... I personally, and I think you use the same batteries. I got, I got all excited about batteries. Yeah. I and mean, who would have thunk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but there, are, I'm sure there are more than than the one brand that I use and we use. That's any yeah. called Any Loop. Any Loop. Uh, Maha is another good brand. M A H A. Okay. They make the same technology battery. So batteries make a difference. Absolutely, yeah. And so why do you like the Maha or the Any Loops? Well, they hold their charge better. Okay. Uh, you can let them sit on the shelf for. I forget what it is, six months or maybe it's a year even, I forget. And they still have like 80 or 90 percent of their capacity where normal uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeables, they drop off that after a month they're, they're, not, as strong. they're not as strong. So they hold the, the Eneloops and the, that particular kind of Maha, I don't remember what their one is, uh, they hold a charge sitting on a shelf for a long time. And they're rechargeable batteries. And they're rechargeable so they'll save you money yeah, in the long run. They'll save you a lot of money. Yeah, you can get, uh, they talk about getting two, three hundred charges on a nickel metal hydride battery. That means full dead to recharge. Okay. So that's typically what they say. Although I've seen do a lot longer than that, you know. That's any uh, nickel metal hydride, whether it's the one in your camera or the one in your flash or whatever. Okay. That's what they say that does about 300 somewhere around there. How do you know this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I read everything, you know, cereal boxes, <laughs> uh, the bottom of the cup, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and I remember it. So. You remember a good, everything. A good you memory. blow my mind. Oh, a, a my A good gosh. memory, you know, I just remember it. All right, so let's go back to Aperture. Okay, so the main thing I wanted, the point I wanted to make is just to, I guess, you know, keep talking about yeah, what you said yeah, about make yeah. sure you have enough time between, mm -hmm. don't take two pictures in a exactly. row if you're using yeah, flash. Yeah. Let your mm -hmm. batteries recycle and then take the next shot if you want your flash to work correctly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there I just added, make sure your batteries are fresh. Now when I do a family portrait, which is a one hour session, I generally change my batteries halfway through. When I was younger, I carried a battery pack. Yeah. But that's heavy and I don't want to carry all that heavy stuff anymore so it's easier for me just to change the batteries halfway through. But I that's hear you. 30 minutes in. Yeah. I'll change my yeah. batteries because yeah. I want to make sure at sunset, because everything I do is at sunset, I want to make exactly. sure that I have enough flash power. Yeah. I'll so. pop them in whenever I get a good uh, easy chance you know to make a change in the batteries. I'll do that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Used to do that in the old days with film. When you get a break you put a new roll of film in. Yep. So you're ready to go. You know, you, you don't wait till the last last one and then you're oh I gotta change it and the especially something's during happening. A, during and, a wedding especially. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh wait a minute, you gotta do that again, you know. That's Put actually on my that's on my um you know, I have I train a lot of people as mm -hmm. you know yeah, and so yeah. I lot a lot of people come with me to assist me on jobs mm -hmm. that I don't need an assistant with. Yeah. So if I'm doing a small wedding that I don't need an assistant, I have a little checklist for them and that's one thing is you always check your batteries and your how many uh, pictures you have left on your flash ca mm -hmm. memory card and everything yeah. like that right you know five minutes before yeah. the ceremony because you don't want to run out of anything yeah. during the wedding ceremony <laughs> uh, I get sloppy in that anymore with the number of shots I have left though because you know I'm using 32 gigabyte cards and they hold over a thousand shots yeah. and you forget about constantly check checking time. it because there's so many on there you know I know yeah. I, know. I got to think about it to, to check it you know, when we had little cards and they eat them up fast, yeah. then you remembered it. But I forget about it half the time because the card goes in the camera and it just, you yeah. know, it stays there for a lot of shoots. You're not shooting, you know, a thousand shots for a lot of stuff. 36 pictures, remember? <laughs> oh, I remember, yeah. And when, you know, like I... five frames a second with my motor drive. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about aperture and its relationship to flash. Yeah, that, I wanted to make that point. Uh, when you have your flash on, on manual, okay, now, you're dialing up or down the power output on the flash. Okay. But also, your camera settings can affect it. As you change your aperture, it reduces or lets more of that light into the camera. Okay? The surprising thing is, the thing people don't think about is, the shutter has really no effect on it. On the flash. On the flash. That the, as far as what you're getting into the camera, because the flash that when it goes off, it goes off its, its, its milliseconds or thousandths of a second. I think the, uh, the range is up to a hundred thousandths of a second. The, the flash duration is so brief. Wow. So, <laughs> so it doesn't matter whether you're at one two hundredth of a second or one thirtieth of a second. The it's flash is over it. long before it could happen. So changing your, your shutter speed is going to affect maybe your ambient light you know, in the background and all, but it's going to have absolutely no effect on the flash because ah. the flash is happening so fast. Wow. But the aperture will change it. As you change the aperture, you are restricting the amount of light. Because, so because the flash, okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm going to okay. get, I, I'm, no, getting no. Okay, yeah. I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you press that shutter button, the flash is seeing your camera reading. It's doing the pre-flash well, no, to on get manual. its own look. We're on manual on the flash. Oh, we're oh, on manual right. on the flash. We're not on oh, TTL. That's right. This is on manual. Oh, if you're on okay. TTL, it, it's a whole different story. Yeah, it's a whole different okay. story. Okay, so, all right, then I'm not understanding. Okay, <laughs> your, your flash is on manual. Okay. Okay, and you want, you can, you can, you want it less, more or less flash. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you're not worried about the background. You don't care. You're just trying to get... I'm trying to light you. Yeah. And I don't care whether the background's light, dark, or in between. I'm trying to light you. Uh -huh. Now, I look and I have, I take a test shot and I look and it's too bright or too dark. Okay. I can change my uh, 
power output of the flash right. to alter the light, right. or I can change my aperture to alter the light. Oh, oh, okay. 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 Changing the shutter. It's too fast. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. The flash Changing is too fast. Changing the shutter fast. doesn't matter. I get it now. Okay. All right, so let's go. Now I'm going to flip back. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing everybody because okay. I'm going to flip back from manual flash to TTL flash. Which is what most of us use most of the time. Right. Yeah. But it's a good idea to learn how to use flash, Absolutely. And flash should, and yeah, manual. Yeah. I did a private lesson yesterday for somebody and she bought a manual flash. Which actually, maybe that's something we should talk about right now, too. Mm -hmm. how, how do you choose a flash to buy? But she bought a manual flash, and it was, uh, the brand was Neewer, I think it's yeah, called, yeah. N-E-E-W-E-R. Mm -hmm. And it was like a $30 flash or something. And <coughs> it, it just, it was so easy to use because it just had power one, power two, mm -hmm. power three, power yeah. four, Real power simple. four. Yeah. It didn't give you any numbers at all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it took her like a half a second to figure out how yeah. to use it. Yeah, real simple. You know, you, you're going back to the flashes you had in the 70s and 80s, basically, which were just... Just a manual flash. Just a manual so flash. So she got yeah. it right away. I just kept, you know, I, mm -hmm. the nice thing is you look at the back of the camera. When you get that flash right, you stay the same distance. Mm -hmm. That's, it's very simple. Yeah. It's just not easy because you're moving around. Exactly. You're, you're adjusting everything. Uh, young Nuo makes a bunch of them $25, $30 flashes that have a, and, and you adjust them the same way. Yeah, you know? okay. Yeah, there's uh, tons of them. Vivitar. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of ones. A lot of people use them when they're doing off-camera flash and they mm -hmm. want to do everything on manual, they do it that way. And takes it saves you a lot of money. It takes you longer to set up, but it saves you tons of bucks. Okay, so if I'm a beginner photographer and I want to buy a flash for my Canon camera, what do I look for? Well, and I don't have I don't have enough money to buy a Canon flash because well, the Canon flash right now is the 600 EX, right? That's the current large and professional one. And that's about five hundred dollars. Yeah, five fifty. And then the uh, one that's less pa power output would be the 430 EX three RT, I think. Okay. And that runs about three hundred bucks. Okay. okay. But that's not as powerful, right? It's about a stop less. Okay, but a stop. Half the power. Yeah. Yeah. For but me, just, I think you yeah, need to buy. It's a, it's a stop. Yeah. At least yeah. this is my advice. When I tell people when they're looking for a flash, they need to buy the strongest flash they can get, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it might be different if you live in somewhere where it's not sunny all the time. Yeah. But here, where we're shooting against the sun for sunset, mm -hmm. we need a lot of power. Yeah. Well, so, you're you're using the power to overcome the sun. Right. You're shooting with the flash outdoors. Right. And that's where you need it. If you're shooting indoors, you, you could probably get away. Uh, I had 430s before I had 580s, which is the old ones. Because with the 430, it was fine for what I was doing. But I wasn't shooting backlit sunset on the beach. Right. But it was okay for... Like event what I photography, was using. you did event photography yeah, inside exactly. all the time. Yeah, exactly. It's fine for that. Or you when lived in Michigan yeah. where the sun doesn't shine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, if you're doing if you're doing an event indoors and you're ten feet from everybody all the time, you know the the one step down is fine for that. But usually it doesn't have other features too. You know, you can't you're use missing it. features. Yeah, the busy. You know, they for off camera flash and stuff like that. It may be missing a lot. So of other if you features. can, you want to buy the Absol best, absolutely. the most powerful flash you can. But okay, so but I don't have the money for a Canon 600 EX. What what am I going to do? Give me some advice. Well, you know, you still probably want a TTL flash. I think okay. that's good advice. Yeah, I mean, instead of starting with a man, you want a TTL because most of the time you want to use it on automatic. So you're going to look at something that's compatible with. The, the Canon system, which would be ETTL2, or you're looking for one that's compatible with the Nikon system, ITTL. Now, and it'll say that, like in the in the description, it'll, right? It'll like if I that. shop on well, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. If, if you go on there, and and two big brands you can buy, uh, of the lower end would be Young Nuo and Nissan, and newer two. They would be your three: Young Nuo, Nissan, and. Uh, uh, Newer. That newer, 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 newer That's, that was yeah, a new new, brand yeah, to me, but now yeah, I've been seeing yeah, it they're, everywhere. They're around, yeah. Uh, they make cheap triggers, too. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you would look at one of them, and you would look at probably their best top-of-the-line ones, and they're going to be a couple hundred bucks as opposed to 600 bucks. I and bought I, a Young Yo 600 EX. I mean, it has the same numbers as the mm -hmm, Canon and yeah, everything, yeah. and it has the same guide number. 
Mm -hmm. What's a guide number? Okay, the guide number <laughs> is, is what we used before we had anything fancy. That's how we figured out what the flash we needed. When it said, let's say it had a, the guide number is the, uh, the distance multiplied by the f-stop. Okay. So if you know the guide number, let's say the guide number is 80. Uh-huh. Okay. So you divide the f, and if the guide number is 80 and you wanted to shoot at f8, you divide 8 into 80 and that gives you 10. So you can properly expose the subject 10 feet away. Okay. All right. So wait a minute, because I thought the way I always looked at guide numbers was that you would do you know, you had to compare apples to apples because you could have different guide numbers for different millimeters yeah, well, okay, of your that's, lens. Okay, that's what the guide number is for, is to make that calculation. Right. But when they're, uh, when they're giving you a guide number on the, on the flash, it says, oh, the guide number is 100. It's 197 on the Canon and the Young Yo 600. Okay, okay. Well, okay. you know, you got to ask the guide number at what? At what okay. millimeter at, for at, your at, lens, at, right? Yeah, well, yeah, because what they do is all these flashes now have zoom lenses on mm -hmm. them, and they may go from 24 to 105 or whatever, and you have to see at what focal length they calculated the guide number. Right. They're calculating it zoomed out. When you go wider, the guide number drops like a rock because you're spreading the same light over Ouch. a much larger area. So if you're gonna compare them, you wanna compare apples to apples, you have to compare them at the same focal length. Right. A lot of them now are going to the 105 because it, it, typically they zoom out to 105, so they give you the guide number at 105 because it's a bigger number. Mm -hmm. So they talk about, but you have to know, and then of course you have to look and talk, see if they're talking meters or feet. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are giving you a rating in meters, so don't be confused because the number could look much different because they were talking in meters as opposed to feet. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, for instance, this lady, Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Who came in yesterday for a, a private lesson. She had her manual flash. Right. And she's like, so we went on the internet to, because mm -hmm. I said, you need a TTL flash, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, but I said, well, let's see what the guide number on is on this. And it said it was 30, 33 or something like mm -hmm. that at 100 millimeters. I think millimeters, okay. am I right? Yeah. Millimeters? Yeah. yeah. Which was the same thing that the Canon and the Young have said, 100 millimeters. Okay. So at 197 at 33, this is a very weak flash that she bought, correct? Yeah. So yeah. 197, the bigger the guide number, yeah. generally, mm -hmm. the stronger the flash. Yes. But you have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Apples to apples, and, and even then they might, they fudge a little bit maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the guide number is, is, is they're, they're being optimistic about it sometimes. When you test them, you find out they're not quite the same. Because how else will you know if it's, if it's an off-brand, how do you know which, if it's going to be powerful enough? Well, you've got to rely on the guide number. But yeah. Like, but you have to That's look and see way, what That's the only way, right? Yeah. But you have to look and see what it was done at. You have to be very critical mm -hmm. thinker when you're buying an off-brand. Yeah. And this guy's uh, uh, 90 may be the same as the other guy's 100. Okay. You know, because there is a difference in how they measure the light, too. Okay. So you can get a little difference and there. it's hard on I it's this is my opinion it's hard to tell on the reviews because again if you've got somebody who's only using this inside mm -hmm. bouncing off of white walls yeah, yeah. he doesn't need as much power yeah. as somebody like me who exactly. lives here shooting against that harsh sun all yeah. the time yeah. so he's given this flash a great review and yeah. it's terrible for me mm -hmm. or something so so the the strongest flash possible absolutely TTL, TTL. And then the brand, if you're doing an off-brand, is well, it just kind of like word of mouth? or If you can afford the manufacturer's brand, That's and here I'm best. talking Nikon or Canon, get theirs because they last a lot longer, they're better built, oh, and they're, they're more reliable. I'm and, still and, using my... And, and they, they talk to the camera. You know, the other ones are all reverse engineered to okay. figure out what's going on between the flash and the camera. Uh -huh. Where them, they're not. They know what they have and they work with their stuff and they're very reliable. But there's a big difference in price here. So if you're a hobbyist and you're only using a flash every once in a while, spending five or six hundred dollars on a flash is, is yeah. crazy, you it's know, especially if you spent that money for your DSLR. So you get these other brands. 
you look online and see who's reliable. Uh, and those brands we talked at are all fairly good, but you gotta remember, they're built cheap. Yeah. There's a reason why they are. Uh, Young Nuo used to be horrendous. Uh, they're flashes. Oh yeah, didn't you buy one at both had, like right away? I had one and I got exactly 100 flashes <laughs> on it. And I know because I was shooting an event with it and that was started at zero and at 100 it stopped working. I sent it back to them in China and never heard another thing about it. <laughs> I never saw it again. And that was at the time, I think it was like 250 or some 300 bucks. Oh, I was, you spent big bucks on yeah, it. Yeah, because it had just come out with their TTL flash. And what it was is they were having tons of the same problem. They put a cheap component in there and the component was failing all every night. And it was just, oh well. Oh, but wow. they got better and better. Uh, this was the early days of them when nobody had even heard of the brand. Yeah. Now I understand they're more reliable. But you do have to watch this, are... that, that the quality control on these things is not as good. And if they come out with a new model, you may be the test, you may, you may be the beta tester, you know. Yeah, it's always a good idea with technology to let other people use yeah. it and you get, don't it, get be it six on the, months later. <laughs> you don't want to be on what they call the bleeding edge. <laughs> I love that. That's so true. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because my young yo, the little, uh, the little plat, a rubber door that goes over the where they put the sink cord in, mm -hmm. it won't stay in, you know. And I just got the thing. Yeah. I got it because so many people were coming to the class, mm -hmm. my classes with that flash, and I had never, I didn't know how to work it. I thought yeah. I'm going to buy one and try yeah. to learn it. So, I, I, I like it though. I, oh, I've been. They're they're okay. I mean, you know, you can get one and and. Uh, you know, like I say, their quality control has gotten a lot better from what I understand online and, and hearing people, but they did have some real issues for a while. Yeah. And, and, and they all do, not just them, but uh, I mean... The newer uh, and... Newer the and the Nissan and all them they've had. Uh, there is another tier of those, which is not the bottom end, the Chinese, but there's a German manufacturer, Metz. Oh, and there I are, forgot about and Metz. And Metz has been around yeah. as long as Canon and Nikon. And they make third-party flashes for these other brands. Okay. So they're about halfway between, but probably closer to the Canon and Nikon price okay. than they are to the Chinese price. But they make a good thing, and you can save a few bucks there, and you have a real good, solid piece of equipment. Ah. So that's another consideration is them. I see. Now that, I didn't even think about that. That's yeah, awesome. But, but Mets, uh, you know, they've been around from back in the day, you know. All right. Now... You said Canon had two metering area modes. Canon was more sophisticated. Did we talk about that yet? Yeah, we talked about that the way, well, we, we did and we didn't. Uh, with the Canon, uh, and they're kind of unique in that, the, the flash has two different ways it can measure, or the camera actually is doing it. It has two different ways it can measure the light from the flash on the scene okay. when it does the pre-flash. The evaluative or average. Evaluative is the default. That's where the oh, e. Oh, we did talk about. Yeah, this. we talked about that a lot, uh, and that's more sophisticated because it's looking at things feedback, where the others just looking at the amount of light and just saying, "Okay, I'll take an average on it." But now you said the Nikon uses the averaging metering system. Yeah, they 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 have one now called uh, Creative Lighting System, which is. Uh, in reading the description, getting more similar to what Canon's doing with the evaluative. That's CLS, as they're, they're calling that. I'm not sure exactly. I haven't had the details on that to see it. I've looked at the Canon papers and see exactly what they're doing. I haven't seen that information on the Nikon. But it's pretty, I'm sure if Canon has it, Nikon has it. Okay. I mean, they're, yeah, they, they you know, neck they, and neck. You know, they're and neck then and what neck. about the Sonys and the Fujis and should you should probably need, especially Sony, right? Sony needs to stay with their own well, kind. <laughs> well, it's hard to find the third party flashes for oh, in TTL for anything other than Canon and Nikon. Oh, I see. Now some of them are starting to get Sony system. Uh -huh. And some of them have, uh, some are starting to get Sony and a lot of that is because Sony's flashes are the old Minolta system. Oh, I see. They've changed the shoe back to the normal shoe but Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did gosh. that uh, between uh, I forget the A7 and the A7 II, but they've gone to the. Thank goodness. They've got to the normal shoe. They don't use the, the they, other one. The propriety, and yeah. that was such a pain in the butt when I first started offering classes, and people with Sony would come in, and they couldn't use my triggers. They couldn't use, 
Because well, the, then they had to yeah, buy an adapter. Yeah, I have a couple of adapters that I used to keep in my bag when we were doing the lighting classes here, so we could so do that. So the Sonys could. Yeah. And so. the Sony flashes, their brand flash now is uh, what they call a multi shoe. It works on both. Oh, okay. On their, their flashes, their current flash line. All right. So. Uh, Obviously, we don't have enough time to talk about everything. We talk, we did such a nice wow. script, so we're going to have to have a second yeah, class yeah, on. Yeah, because I wanted to I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, wireless triggers and all that kind and of it, stuff. And but, uh, but uh, right now, I want to talk about s stuff that you talked about, focus assist, and you and and when we were talking about the optical and the oh, yeah. infrared okay, and yeah. and infrared is optical and okay, so focus assist. Okay, focus assist is a, uh, a light that the flash emits that just throws some light on the subject so to give, to give the camera's metering or focus system something to look at. Do all f flashes do that or? Most, most if not all off camera flashes have that. What do you mean off camera flashes? Well, I speed mean lights. speed lights, okay. yeah, as oh, opposed okay. to uh, the internal, when the, the camera itself usually has some little light too that does that. So now that's in addition to the pre-flash. Yeah, that's something different. The pre-flash you don't see because that's part of that whole thing that's so fast you don't even see the pre-flash. You just see one flash. Okay. The other one is a, uh, a light that's being emitting and typically with your external flashes it's not the flash that's firing, it's another light built into it. Into the flash? In, into the flash, yeah. When, when you have your flashes uh, usually when you look at your flash, there's a big red area or dark red area on the front of the flash. Okay. And that's where that light's coming from. Okay. And it, it's a dark red beam that comes out of that in a pattern. So that's what your, your focus system looks at. It gives it enough light to focus. So it's talking to your camera lens basically camera well, it, on your lens it's it's just throwing some light out there you know just like if you put a flashlight on it or whatever which it's is just, what we do in the dark sometimes yeah, yeah. but focus. i mean th you know this is doing if that's turned on that's supposedly throwing enough light out there that if the subject's fairly close it'll manage to focus on it okay, okay. Yeah, well one of the things i no noticed with my new young yo is it does it gives a little yeah, pattern of see red light pattern. on yeah. which i the yeah. canon i don't see it no because it's a I think it's more to the uh, a darker, more infrared or something so on the, on the canon. It, so you don't see it, but it's you. still and doing that's the just same thing. Naturally built in. That's just naturally built in. If you're using in manual or in TTL. Right. You okay. can usually in your menu system of the camera turn that off. Focus assist. You but can why turn would it you? off. Well, you know, maybe whatever you're shooting could see it and be disturbed by it if you're shooting wildlife or something, oh, you know, something oh, like that. Okay. But typically you would have it on because it's nice to yeah. have that focus help, you know. Now, when I put my young yo on Carmen's camera yesterday, because she mm -hmm. has a Canon camera, right. when she was taking pictures, I saw two flashes. Now, what did you think that was? Because I kept, me I meant to go and look in a mirror to see what happened, if that actually that's, helped. That's happen. your uh, red eye reduction, okay. okay? We get red eye sometimes in pictures. And when what, they, what's, what causes red eye? Red eye is, is what you're looking at is the blood vessels in the back of the eye. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's dark, so your pupil is opened up real wide. Okay. And then when your flash is really close to the lens, it's shooting right into your eye and it's lighting up oh. all those blood vessels in the back and you're taking a picture of them, Ooh. perfectly exposed. Okay. So, and, and it happens because your iris or your pupil is so big. So what happens is this red eye reduction, it's just a pre-flash that you can see uh -huh. and it pops. So hopefully your iris closes and then it doesn't see as much of the back of your eye. Oh my goodness, eye, that's all. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a flash to get you to react and have your eye closed down. That's all it is. Wow, that's but so cool. But you see that, you know, because, you, well, you have to because it does it enough in advance to give you a chance for your eyeball to, to shrink. shrink and then take the photo. That's fascinating. Now, do is that built into most of the... Most of them have that, and usually that's an option in your camera menu system. Is it the default usually? Uh, 
I don't remember ever seeing you know, two you, flashes you, you, before. That's why I, I'm asking. I'm thinking, no, I don't think it's the default. I think, I think the default is off. So why, what's the pros and cons of using the red eye reduction? Or red eye, what's it called? Red well, eye red, eye, red, eye. Red, eye, red eye, you know, it depends on who it is, okay. but it's red eye elimination, you know, say red eye sun. Well, you, you're seeing one, you're seeing two flashes, mm -hmm. so the person may react somewhere else, too. You know, they may, blink more they may blink or they may make a funny face or uh, if it's an animal, it may react to the pre-flash, you know, to that uh, Would it take red up eye more flash. battery, too? Oh, sure, because you're, it's another flash. Yeah. It's another flash going off, so it's, it's taking battery power. And if you're trying to shoot at full power, you're not going to get full power on the flash because okay. it just spent a little bit and it's not recharging that fast. Okay. So there are downside to it. So, but if you're getting a, the, the easiest way to get rid of red eye is to get the flash high. out of the axis of the lens, get it up higher so it's not, the light isn't coming into your eye and straight back, get it off angle. So most speed lights will be good enough if you have a short lens, but if you have a long lens, you're going to need a bracket to yeah. get that thing way up, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you need. All right, I got one more thing because yeah. we're running out of time. Oh, are we? Oh, geez. But you know yeah. what? We're we have a whole we have a whole we have another, another show, show we because another we had show. so much to talk about. Yeah. We were like last night we were freaking out when the guy canceled and we came up with all this stuff and Joe wrote it all up because he's amazing. Yeah, I got like two pages so, of stuff yeah, there. Yeah, so we're gonna go. I think we're, we're gonna on third line next emergency <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to just talk about pop-up flash. Okay, so I don't want to buy a flash. Okay. I have a flash on my camera. Mm -hmm. How does that work? The, the same way the others is just not as powerful. So it's TTL? It's TTL. Can I shoot it in manual as well? Sometimes. If you go, that would be in a menu setting? Yeah. I don't even know how to do that, yeah. to tell you the truth. Yeah. But the it, professional cameras don't even come with pop-up flashes, no. but I have a junior DSLR that has yeah. a pop-up flash. And, and usually if you go in there to the inboard flash, it will have the ability to do some of that but stuff. The, Not always. But the but, TTL is usually but the, fine. The TTL works fine on them. They're very limited power, so you're, you know, you're going to have to be fairly close or be using a very high ISO. Uh, but they work fine, and you know, they're, they're nice to have. I wish, you know, I wish my, quote, professional cameras the Canon Pro, Pro cameras don't have the flash. I so, know. A lot of the Nikon do. I wish it had it on there because it's useful sometimes. I don't want to carry this big heavy flash around, but I might want a little bit of a kiss of light. I mm -hmm. might just want a little reflection in the eyes or something like that. And it'd be great if I had that on thing there. I so you agree know. because when I travel, I take my 60D because of the pop-up mm -hmm. flash. Yeah. And I want, but I miss my full frame. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I'd like Canon to have, doesn't make a no, full frame that has no, a pop-up flash. Yeah, they, for whatever reason, they wanted you to buy the the other one. But it's a question of. I don't want to carry it around. No, you know. So, so I do like the onboard flash. It's it's good. They're handy to have. All right. So now, what do you what what's coming up for you? Now we know you've got Saint Augustine. Your Saint Augustine trip coming up. What's the date on that again? May. May. Fourth through the seventh. Fourth through the seventh. <laughs> yeah. Since you uh, hesitated. <laughs> yeah. May fourth through the seventh. I can't remember what day it is today. Never what it's going to be in May. But you're uh, pretty caught up right now. I'm pretty caught up right now. The big thing for me, of course, is is uh, at, at the F Triple C. We have our our gigantic conference coming up. Uh, you know, coming up very shortly, the beginning of May, May 10th, 11th, and 12th. March. 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 I'm still in May. March 10th, <laughs> 11th, and 12th. Uh, we have 14 speakers, and we have uh, 16 vendors at the show. And it's going to be fantastic. I mean, a lot of these shows, I was just looking at another show, and they have three speakers. Oh, we wow. have 14 speakers. And all big name speakers. And they're, and they're all big names. I mean, you have Rick Salmon. You have, you know, you have just an incredible number of people there speaking. So it's, it's fantastic. And this is all, as they say, you know, Saturday and Sunday is all for one low price, you know? Yeah. What, uh, what is the price? The price, uh, if you're a member of a camera club and... Uh, here in Florida is one forty nine ninety one fifty. That's I thought that was the early registration. No, no, that, no, no. It's that's one, all it costs for one, the whole weekend. And, it, and it's one. Well, there, that's the registration unless you walk in. If you walk in, it's another twenty bucks. So it's one hundred and sixty-nine yeah, or seventy-nine yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. And you want. if you're not a member of one of the camera clubs here, I think it's one seventy. Well, I can tell my viewers a secret. 
if you just become a member of our meetup group at under, meetup.com slash understand photography, you will automatically be a member of one of the camera clubs. <laughs> and you're going to save a considerable period. And you'll save some money, you're but you have to join money. our meetup group. Yeah. yeah, you're going to save some money because it's, you know, it's 20 or $30 saving. Now, I know for the local people watching this, um, Peachtree Camera Repair is going to be cleaning sensors. Yeah. So yeah. we've got somebody, because we have no one local who cleans sensors. Exactly. And then he can, he's going to also be looking at cameras. Hunt's photo video is coming mm -hmm. and they're going to bring a bunch of they're stuff. They're bringing, I think, a tractor trailer down. I mean, they're they, a lot of they're lighting going to bring stuff. a lot of stuff down. They're going to have, in addition to camera lenses, they're going to have tripods. They're going to have all kinds of stuff. Uh, Wacom tablets, stuff like that. Just, you name it, they're going to, they're, they're setting up a store there. Yeah, they're, they really are. They've they got really like are. double booths. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're setting up a store, and then we're going to have uh, Tamron there and Sigma there with all their lenses that you can look at and play with. Uh, we're going to have somebody there buying your used equipment. Oh. So, so if you have uh, used equipment and you want to lighten your load or whatever, you can bring it in there. And, and they they'll give look you a check it, right there. And they'll, <laughs> they'll tell you what they'll pay for it, and you can say yes or no, and, and they'll give you the check. And that's used photo? Used yeah, photo used pro, photo, right? Yeah, okay. used photo pro, yeah. So you can do it right there, or maybe you can trade in your stuff too. You know, you can get the money and you can go over to the other booth and buy something else. I uh, I just sold some equipment to use Photo Pro mm -hmm. because I was going to put it on eBay. I was going to do it and I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I finally just took it in. You might not get quite as much money, but it's so easy less, just to less throw it less in. Hassle, less hassle. Oh, well, you know, so that's March 10th through the 12th. F3C.org is the website. F, like Florida, 3, the number, C. F3C.org. That, that website, as long as as well as the show notes from today and all the links that we talked about are going to be on understandphotography.com under the tab that says the understand and understand photography show. So make sure you check out our website. We have a lot of good stuff on our website. We've got good blog articles and everything like that. In fact, some of the things we were going to talk about today <laughs> are already in our blog. Um, if you're struggling with flash, come to the convention and take my class. It's March 10th from 9 a.m. to noon, and from 10.30 to noon, we're going to be actually just taking pictures. We're going to have, first going to have a sit-down class, and we're going to take pictures and practice, so you can practice with help, okay? I also have a flash class, which is part of the four weeks to proficiency in photography, which that class starts March 21st. Don't forget, you can listen to the Understand Photography show as a podcast now on iTunes, okay? Ne Thank you, Joe. You're quite welcome. It's a pleasure. Especially coming last minute. There we go. Well, we got another show if there's I another know. cancellation. <laughs> so next week uh, on, on the Understand Photography Show, my, my guest is Roger Hammer. And Roger Hammer is a naturalist. He's, he literally wrote many of the books on the Florida Ever, Everglades. So we're going to talk about wild flower photography and some more about the Everglades tomorrow or next week's show. So tune in here if you want to see it live on the Understand Photography Facebook page or you can always watch us on YouTube later or listen to us as a podcast and we will see you next week, Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching episode number 25 of the Understand Photography Show. Yeah.